It's Wednesday, the 26th of July. Now, if regulators around the world don't take notice of the information I'm about to give via this paper, then they are at best, in my view, negligent. At worst, I don't even want to think about it. After Moderna booster vaccines in a trial done in Switzerland, there were 777 uh, working people followed up with 777 controls. 5.1% of those who had the booster vaccine had increased troponins, indicating cardiomyocyte damage. So 5.1% increased cardiac marker damage, chemicals in the blood. 2.8% of the 777, that is 1 in 35, 1 in 35, had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. Quite astounding and uh, incredible that's what this is about if you want to watch stick around I think I can get through it all in about sort of but the main points in about 10 minutes if you want to stay because this is really quite an impressive study by cardiologists and scientists in uh, Switzerland myocardial injury after COVID-19 vaccine this is the Moderna mRNA1273 booster Department of Cardiology and Cardiovascular Research Institute of Basel in Switzerland, of course. Uh, now, this is published in the European Journal of Heart Failure. It's an open access journal of the Heart Failure Association of the European Society of Cardiology. So top flight stuff. This paper is accepted. It is peer reviewed. It's not yet published. We've got a preprint, uh, not a preprint, uh, a pre-release copy because it's not a preprint because it is peer reviewed and a fully accepted paper in an international peer-reviewed reputable journal. Um, It's a prospective active surveillance study. So they started, they went forward, collected the data as they went on, and it's active surveillance. They were actually looking for things. In the past, what we've had is uh, retrospective passive surveillance. So it's been passive in the past. People have only um, collected data as patients have come forward to complain about it. And uh, it's been retrospective looking back. This is, this is a much better quality study all round and has produced really quite, um, quite worrying results, really. Uh, and this study was industry independent. It had nothing to do with the people that are making the money. Nothing to do with the people that are making the money. This study was not carried out by the people that are making the money. Independent. In the uh, instigated by the uh, investigators themselves. So the aim, uh, they want to look at the incidence of potential mechanism of oligosymptomatic. So oligo means few, oligosymptomatic. So oligosymptomatic myocardial injury um, is myocardial injury, which has sometimes no symptoms uh, or sometimes minimal symptoms. It's oligosymptomatic. But that doesn't mean to say there can't be quite severe severe uh, consequences. In fact, just before we go on, I think I'll just tell you something about the potential severe consequences. Now, this is from um, the textbook of medicine that's used, been used for generations now. Um, I just want to read something from this. Um, in most patients, this is talking about myocarditis. In most patients, the disease is self-limiting and the immediate prognosis is excellent. However... Death may occur due to ventricular arrhythmia or rapid progressive heart failure. Myocarditis has been reported as a cause of sudden and unexpected death in young athletes. And we could go on and read about longer term complications. Not my words, directly from David's principles and practice of uh, medicine. So one in 35 participants... Uh, one in 35 recipients, rather, one in 35 who received the booster vaccine had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. I'm just going to read that out again. One in 35 of people who received the booster had vaccine-associated myocardial injury. This is, th- th- this is a range of adverse reaction that is off the scale in healthcare, off the scale. And yet, and yet, in New Zealand and other places, it's still being actively and unethically, some might say, promoted um this is just off the scale risks off the scale completely the only way you would take this kind of risk in healthcare if the alternative was certain death otherwise you certainly wouldn't you know we just don't take this level of risk it's just complete madness what has happened here 